without question. I mean, we were shooting for the same purses, if not larger purses, 20 years ago. And I think that is a lack of professionalism that the sport has had over a long period of time. I think that if there was bigger money and a smaller amount of events, the sport would become more professional. But it's very accessible and it's very accessible to the masses, which is great, but I think there are too many shoots, too many big shoots, and I think that the importance of a big shoot is somewhat lost. You know, I think in any sport, there is always gray areas, and I think that those gray areas can always be exploited. People do cheat. For me, I think that uh, you're only cheating yourself. I think that the level of accessibility to scorecards, etc., etc., would be met better by a scorecard where the referee signs the scorecard and then uses the scorecard as a punch system. The referee signs the card, if you miss a target, he punches a hole in your scorecard. If you straight the stand, you walk on to the next one and the referee signed it. For me, that's a fail-safe way of doing it. I know it's a radical change and idea, but, but I think that if we're going to get the sport completely clean, that's one of the ways forward in achieving that. The pressure side of it, I think, becomes slightly easier the more experienced you get. Pressure only comes from the mindset of what other people think about you. So I think that the more the more experienced and the older I've got, the pressure's actually reduced. My focus every year is on the World Championships, whether that is English sporting or FITAS sporting, that is my focus and that's where I mentally prepare. And I try and build my shooting up to reach a crescendo two or three weeks before that event. That's going out, competing in local competitions on a Sunday, trying to do as many competitions as we possibly can, getting your timing built up so that your timing's spot on and correct, shooting different target presentations, different sequences, seeing different backgrounds, different light formations, and then easing off slightly coming up to the major event so that you've got a bit of gas in the in the oh. tank. Physically, as you can see, I don't work hugely on my physical training, but I am reasonably fit. And one thing I do do is work very hard on my hydration. We normally shoot in the middle of the summer for the World and European Championships. They're normally in hot countries. So by shooting in that environment, you'll naturally be dehydrated. So I overcook my hydration to make sure that, you know, I'm sort of fairly normal. Guns are not politically correct and media tend to shy away from them. That coupled with the fact that the, the area of missing a target is, is such a grey area because you cannot really, unless there's, there's some major advances in technology, um, cover the shot flight through the air in relation to where the target is. You know, if a, if a pool player plays a shot and it rattles in the jaws and comes back along the cushion, everybody can see how close it was. Rory McIlroy makes a putt and it lips out and sits on the edge of the hole, everybody can see how close it was. A darts player puts one the other side of the wire, everybody can see how close it is. But with shooting, the actual element of the miss, nobody knows how close or how far away you were from hitting that target. So that's the big element of, of shooting that, that we've got running against us as opposed to other sports. Having said that, some great characters in there. You know, the top guys all have a lot of fun and, 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 and you know, there's some, there's some wonderful people that you could film and, 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 a, and make a great personality show out of. Um, whether it'll actually go mainstream media, I've got my doubts. But I think that's, that's because of a few reasons rather than just one.